Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called palindromic substrings. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. Given a string S, return the number of palindromic substrings in it. A string is a palindrome when it reads the same backward as forward. So if we have string A or AA, both of these are palindromes because they read the same either way. A substring is a contiguous sequence of characters within the string. Example one, we have ABC and here we have all individual characters as palindromes. They read the same forward and backward. So we have three. And example two, we have AAA. So of course we have the three individual characters as our three palindromes. And then we can also make palindromes of size two. So we have two of those. And finally, a palindrome of size three with three A's. Now, if you notice, we have palindromes of both size two and size three. So if we had a string with ABA or ABBA. We know these are palindromes because they read the same forward and backward. And that's because they're mirrored across some center. In this first string here, the center is the character B. And in this string, the center is between these two characters. So we could have a center being a character itself or going between two characters. Okay, now say I had the following example. This is my input string S. How many palindromes can I make here? Well, starting at that first character, I have character A. This by itself is a palindrome, right? So I have one palindrome so far. Now, if I wanted to expand my palindrome, I would check my right and left character. Here I have a B, but to the left, there is no character. So I can't really expand to make a bigger palindrome. So with A being our center, we can only make one palindrome. Now we wanna check between between A and B. How many palindromes can we make here? Well, to be mirrored between two characters, those two characters have to be equal, and A and B aren't equal, so between A and B is going to be zero. Now, going to character B, how many palindromes can I make here? Well, B by itself, of course, is a palindrome, and now checking left and right. A and C are not equal, so we can't expand that palindrome, so here we can only make one as well. And we want to make these checks all the way through, with our centers being between two characters and at a character. So rewriting the string just a little bit, now we want to see at each center how many palindromes we can make, and between each character how many palindromes we can make. So at A, we could have made one. Between A and B, we can't make any. At B, we can make one. Between B and C, we can't make any. At C, we can make one. And if we wanted to push this further, we see that both these Bs are equal, so that's another palindrome we can make. So now we're going to increase this count to two. And checking to the left and right again, these aren't equal, C and A aren't equal, so here we can only make two palindromes. Again, between these two characters, they're not the same, so we can't make any. B, we can make one. And since Cs are equal, we can make another one here, but we stop at A and B over here since they're not equal. Between these are zero. At C is one and that's all we can go. Between C and A is zero, at A is one. And between A and A, we can actually make a palindrome of one. Both of these are equal. Now, if we wanted to push further out, there are no more characters to the right. So there's nothing to compare against. So we have to stop here. And at this last character, we can make a palindrome of one. But again, we can't keep pushing out. There are no more characters. So if we add all of these numbers up, we would get the total number of palindromic substrings in our input S. So that's exactly what we need to do to code this up. And to go through time complexity for this solution, if our string S has n characters, we're going to be checking centers for every n that we have. And we're also going to be checking between every character. So we're checking at every character and between every character. So that's going to be two n checks. And for every check, we potentially go through the entire string pushing out. So we're going to multiply this by n again because we could be checking every single character for every center that we go through. So that's going to be two n times n or in big O notation. We don't care about the constant, so there's going to be an n squared solution. So let's go ahead and code this up and then run through an example. Okay, to code this up, the first thing I want to do is keep track of my count. So this is going to start off at zero. We have zero palindromic substrings so far. Now I want to loop through every single character in S. So for i in range, length of s, I want to count how many palindromic substrings I can make with my index being the center, with i being my center, and with i and i plus one being the center. So say I start off with index zero, right? I want to see how many palindromic substrings I can make with index zero being the center and between zero and one. So say I have a helper function that checks how many palindromic substrings I can make at each center. Let's call this helper function palindrome. So we're going to add two counts, self.palindrome, and it's going to take in string s and the index that I am on. So here I'm at index i. So I'm going to pass in i and i. And I'm also going to check how many substrings I can make with i and i plus one. Now to actually write out this helper function, I'm going to define it over here. So I have palindrome. It's going to take in self, string s, left and right indices. Now this is going to keep count of how many palindromic substrings I can make at each center. And now I want to see how many I can actually make. So while my left and right are actually in bounds of the string, so while left is greater than or equal to zero and right is less than the length of my string and the characters of the two indices I am on are equal. So and 
S of left equals S of right. When this is true, I can see if I can continue pushing down my palindrome. So for this, I'm going to first increment count by one. Right now I can make a palindrome and I'm going to push left down by one and right up by one. So say I pass in zero, zero in the beginning, right? I is zero, I pass that in. Now both left and right are within bounds, they're zero. And of course, these characters are equal. We're passing in the same left and right. So these characters have to equal each other. So we increment count by one and we push left and right down. Well, then left would be minus one and right would be one. And of course, this wouldn't be an inbounds anymore. So we would exit. And then we'd call this again with index zero and one. So we check between A and B and we'd see that they're in bounds, but the left and right characters aren't equal to each other. So we would exit and return zero. So in the end of this, we have to return count. And once we do this for every single index, all we do at the end is return counts. So let's go ahead and submit this and it is accepted. Now before leaving, let's just run through a super quick example to see exactly what our code is doing line by line. Okay, say this is my input S, so we have AAA, this is the same as example two. First thing we do is initialize counts to be zero. Now we wanna loop through for I in range length of S. So it's gonna start with I being zero and now we call self.palindrome with s left being zero and right also being zero they're both i right now now initialize count again so this is going to be zero and we make a check if left is greater than equal to zero which it is and right is less than the length of s so length of s is three so this is also true and the characters at both of these indices are the same that's of course true they're the same index what we do now is increment count by one and push left and right down so left now is going to be minus one and right is going to be one. We go back in this while condition and this breaks. Left is not greater than equal to zero. So all we do is return count. So now that we return count, we were calling this over here. We add the counts what we've returned. So we add one over here. And now we call this again with i and i plus one. So we call this with zero and one. Calling this function again, we have count being zero and we make the same checks. We're within bounds and we check the characters. These two characters at index zero and one are equal. So we're going to increment count by one and push left and right down. Left is minus one, right is two. We go back in the while loop and we're not within bounds. So we break and return. So we add another one to counts over here. So now counts is going to be two. Now we go into this for loop again and now index is going to be one. Now we call counts again with self.palindrome with left being one and right being one or in this function over here count starts off at zero and left and right are both in bounds and we want to check if they're equal. So one and one of course they're equal. Increment count by one. Push left and right down. So left is now zero. Right is now two. We check again we're in bounds and the characters are equal. They're both a they're equal. We move this up by one and left and right down. So now this is negative one this is three and once we come back in this while loop we would break and return count which was two add to count two so now this goes from two to four and we call this again now with one and two so back in here again count is zero this is one this is two they're equal we move this up by one move both of these down and once we go back in the while loop we break we're not within bounds anymore so we return one and we add to count one so now this goes to five and we go in our for loop one last time so now index is two and we call these again so we call this first both of these are going to be two and count is going to be initialized to zero they're within bounds and they're equal to each other so we increment counts by one and we move left and right so this is now three this is now one and this would not be in bounds anymore this is not less than the length of three this is the length of three so we exit and return one over here so we add to counts one this becomes six and we have our final function called left being two right being three count is initialized to zero and left is greater than equal to zero but right is not less than the length of s so we don't go into this while condition and we return zero. So we add to count zero, which keeps it at six. So we finally return counts, which was six. And as you can see, this is the answer that we were expecting. And that is exactly what we returned. So we just went ahead and solved palindromic substrings. If you have any questions whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.